Yeah, good morning everyone and welcome back to this NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been discussing about uh, three membered ring containing natural products and their uh, total synthesis and recently we started discussing about uh, four membered ring and non natural products. We just completed the discussion on the synthesis of cubane. So, now we will move to some interesting and naturally occurring compounds and how they have been synthesized. So, when you talk about a four membered ring, uh, immediately one natural product which should come to all your mind is penicillin. So, penicillin as you know, it has a great uh, history and it was uh, discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming in 1920 and uh, that was considered as one of the greatest discoveries because during the world war uh, many people died and uh, with the isolation of penicillin later you know they could change the treatment for uh, people who were infected seriously during the war. And uh, this penicillin if you look at uh, the history of penicillin, after seeing the potential of penicillin. USA and uh, UK, they come up with a real, uh, you know, high level of uh, target and what they wanted to do was, first of all, so they know when they isolated penicillin, they know it, it is uh, it's an excellent antibiotic, but they did not know the structure. So the first objective was to elucidate the structure, so what is the correct structure of penicillin, okay. Once you isolate, once you elucidate the structure, then the next step is whether we can, we should be able to synthesize this chemically, okay. Chemical synthesis in the laboratory is the second objective. Once it is done at the laboratory level, then it should be possible to scale up. And at the same time, they were also looking at the third option that is uh, whether penicillins can be synthesized or can be made on a large scale through fermentation. Okay. So, these were the three major ob objectives uh, during the second world war, how to produce more penicillins because this was very much required as you know many people died in the second world war not due to the opposition, but due to the infection. So, that was a serious problem and they wanted to address this as early as possible. But however, as you know, uh, this is not an easy task, it took more time and uh, the synthesis of penicillin somehow could not be achieved during the second world war. It took uh, almost 10 years later to achieve the first total synthesis. And from the structure point of view, the correct structure was elucidated with the help of X-ray and that was done by uh, Nobel laureate uh, Professor Dorothy. And uh, if you have a close look at these penicillins, you can see one core structure is the beta lactam. Okay, the four membered beta lactam and that is fused with say a five membered ring. Okay, that is fused with a five membered ring. So, this is the core structure for all penicillins. Okay, and what you also see is this amino group adjacent to the carbonyl group, amino group adjacent to the carbonyl group and which is acylated, okay, which is acylated with various acyl group. Okay, and when you look at this four membered lactam, okay, so this four membered lactam, it is quite unstable compared to normal amides or normal lactams. As you know, cyclic amides are called lactams, and compared to five membered, six membered lactams, the four membered lactam is quite unstable. And of course, when it is unstable, it can also react faster. So, what Woodward told us it is not like a normal amide okay so if you look at normal amide you can see this can exist like this whereas in the case of the four membered lactam okay it cannot exist like this so that is where the reactivity of beta lactam comes into play and if you look at literature how these beta lactams were made okay so the beta lactams the parent structure that is the four membered four membered compound with NH, 
that is this compound is called acetidines. Okay. So, beta lacta means acetidine with a carbonyl group at 2 position. Okay. A common name we always call it as beta lactams, but you know IUPAC names are you know different. Uh, for remember the beta lactams are called acetidinones okay, uh, from the uh, IUPAC. And as we have seen penicillins and there are many other substituted penicillins which are well known as antibacterial agents. From the spectroscopic point of view, when you take IR of all these beta lactams, you will see a significant absorption at between 1735 to 1765. Normally when you look at uh, simple amides or 6 member lactam, you will see a strong absorption at 1660. So, you will see clear difference close to 100. Okay. So, that tells the presence of beta lactam. When you, when you make beta lactam, the best way to see is just to take IR and then see, oh, you have got uh, beta lactam. Okay, because you will see a clear absorption around 1750. That will confirm that you have made beta lactam. So, how these beta lactams were made? Before I talk about the total synthesis of penicillin, okay, how these beta lactams were generally prepared. So, there are five common reactions which uh, you know have been successfully used to make these beta lactams. One, one can use cyclization, okay, intramolecular cyclization to form this form of ring. Two, one can also think about using cycloaddition reaction. Okay, so, when you have four member ring, then immediately you can also think about using 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Three, ring expansion that means you know you, you have a 3 membered ring uh, from 3 membered ring you can expand to 4 membered ring. And 4 uh, this also quite uh, frequently used in the synthesis of beta lactams is insertion reaction. Okay. So, either you can you can do carbon insertion or nitrogen insertion. Okay. The last one is uh, from acetidines. Okay. So, these are the 5 common types of reactions which are routinely used and regularly used to make various beta lactams. First let us start with cyclization reaction. Cyclization reaction normally if you have a beta amino acid, okay, if you have a beta amino acid then if you treat this beta amino acid with acyl chlorides, PCL3, SOCl2 then it can form beta lactams. But isolation is very important because these are quite unstable, you should quickly isolate to get the corresponding beta lactams. However, when you have beta amino propionic acids, okay, then if you heat it for a long time, if you heat it for a long time, there is a possibility of beta elimination. So, when beta elimination takes place, you will get amine and the carboxylic acid. I will just show that example. So, here you know you see this is alpha beta ok. So, beta amino acid this on treatment with acyl chloride ok. So, basically so acylation takes place at the carboxylic acid followed by the nucleophilic attack of the nitrogen you get the corresponding beta lactam. And if you heat it, if you heat it, it undergoes a retromycle ok, it undergoes a retromycle to give the corresponding amine and alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. So, this is the major drawback when you do such cyclization reaction you should never heat it okay, when you have beta amino acid. Then same beta amino acid as I said acyl chloride PCL3 SOCl2 could be used for cyclization. So, PCL3 will give you the same beta lactam and if you protect the nitrogen, if you protect the nitrogen and then treat with thionyl chloride. So, what will happen? This carboxylic acid intramolecularly can attack the amine. Okay. So, then once it is here, then as you can see here, this nitrogen lone pair can attack intramolecularly to the carbonyl and it can rearrange to give 4 member lactone and the carboxylic acid is isobutric acid. And this isobutric acid still SOCl2 is there, is not it? So, what will happen? It will go to the corresponding acid chloride, isobutric acid chloride. Okay. 
So you can use PCL3, you can use SOCL2, you can also use CH3, COCL to form this type of beta lactams starting from beta amino acid. Only thing is you should not heat it. When you heat it, you will get the amine and alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. Now if you look at this example, okay, again cyclization takes place, but for NH2 to cyclize, the NH2 to cyclize you need a base and a hindered base, the here Grignard is used to remove this proton and that can cyclize to give a four-membered lactam. Okay. So the hindered, uh, hindered Grignard reagent as is used as a nucleophile uh, base to form this four-membered this one. And in this example, as you can see here, this is the most acidic proton, isn't it? So if you treat with base, okay, even triethylamine or sodium ethoxide, so it can pick up the proton here and intramolecular SN2 type cyclization should give the corresponding beta lactam. So this particular example is slightly different than the three examples which I discussed. So the earlier example amine, the primary amine, primary amine and intramolecularly attacks the carbonyl group, okay, carbonyl group having a leaving group. Here already you, you can see the amide bond, so amide bond is already formed. The earlier cases amide bond that is a lactam bond is formed during the key reaction. Here in this case the SN2 substitution takes place, okay, anion is generated and yeah, you have a good leaving group that is a chloride or bromide or iodide, the intramolecular SN2 like reaction takes place to give corresponding beta lactam. Then one can also use beta gamma unsaturated hydroxamides, beta gamma unsaturated hydroxamides, what is that? You can see, so this is called hydroxamides. Okay. Then you have alpha, beta, gamma, beta, gamma unsaturated hydroxamide. Now on the double bond, if you add iodine, if you add bromine, so then it can form the corresponding iodonium or bromonium ion. Once this is formed, then intramolecularly the nitrogen can attack and open the corresponding iodonium or bromonium ion. So, that will give you the corresponding four-membered lactam, that is the beta lactam, okay. So basically you are doing iodolactamization or have bromo lactamization, okay. So that is how you make this uh, uh, beta lactam and this also can be easily cleaved, NO bond can be cleaved under hydrogen analysis condition to get the free NH. Then one can also think about using cycloaddition reaction. So 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. So when you want to use 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to form beta lactam, so one portion should be alkene, the other portion should be isocyanate, okay. So isocyanates are easy to make, okay. So you have isocyanate and then double bond. Then this can undergo a spontaneous 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to give the corresponding your beta lactam. If you use uh, Chlorosulfonyl isocyanate, okay, chlorosulfonyl isocyanate, you will get this uh, beta lactam and then the chlorosulfonyl group can be easily removed. If you take this and then treat with water, just, just water that is sufficient that will cleave the SO2Cl. Ring expansion, so ring expansion is a very uh, interesting and important reaction because as such four member ring itself is strained and you are getting this four membered ring from another strained compound that is three membered ring. So from that angle one strain to another strain it takes place, okay. So for example, if you have the cyclopropane, okay, cyclopropane having a hydroxyl group and amine attached to the same carbon, hydroxyl and amine attached to the same carbon, okay. Now if the NH is converted into NCl, NCl, then treatment with silver salts, as you know, when you take any N halide, treat with silver salt, first thing is silver chloride, you know, it will come out and then you will have a positive charge on the nitrogen. Then the cyclopropane will open up and migrate to 
the positive charge on the nitrogen and now the positive charge will be on the carbon having hydroxyl group. So, the loss of proton will give you the four member ring. Okay. So, this is another interesting way to make the four membered beta lactam. Okay. Then as I, as I said another interesting reaction to make beta lactams is carbene insertion. Okay. If you can generate carbene, carbenes are gen generally you know, made from diazo compound. Okay. So, if you have diazo compound and then treat with rhodium, uh, dirhodium uh, tetracetate. Okay. So, then it can generate in situ carbene or carbenoids since you are using rhodium metal it is a rhodium carbenoid that can you know immediately undergo a carbene insertion at this carbon to give the corresponding beta lactams. Okay. So, now uh, we discussed uh, quite a few methods for making beta lactams. Okay. Now, we will move to how penicillin was discovered. Okay. The penicillin the antibiotic uh, well known antibiotic a uh, great history behind this isolation of penicillin and the use of penicillin, but how the first total synthesis of penicillin was accomplished. Professor Sheehan from MIT uh, and his group, they spent several years, you know, you can see when it was isolated 1920, okay. So, they sent, uh, they spent many years on the total synthesis of penicillin and finally their sustained efforts led to the first total synthesis in 1957. Okay. Let us see how he has synthesized and what is what was his retrosynthetic plan. The first bond to be disconnected obviously uh, was the lactam bond. Okay. You cleave the lactam bond and you get a carboxylic acid and amine. Okay. So, you have a carboxylic acid and an amine. So, basically what you are going to do is you are going to make C n bond. Okay. So, when you have an amine and carboxylic acid, you can use many coupling reagent. Okay. Then if you look at the right hand side, so that is a protected aldehyde, is not it? That is a protected aldehyde. Okay. So, you need aldehyde and then the aldehyde if you treat with this amino thiol, okay, then it can protect and before that if you look at this amine, amine is already protected and to start with you need a protected amine. So, normally they use thalamide because thalamide if you treat with hydrazine, so the thalyl group can be cleaved and then you will get back NH2. So, for protection of NH2 olden days they used to use thalic anhydride method. Okay. And this can be easily cleaved as I said this aldehyde and this amino thiol. Okay. So, they can they can this aldehyde can be protected to give this right hand side portion and this upon hydrolysis with NH uh, hydrazine will give you NH2. So, the first target is to make this D penicillamine hydrochloride in optically active form. Okay. That was the first task for Sheehan to accomplish. So, he started with uh, racemic valine and then treated with uh, chloroacetyl chloride. So, you have NH2, the NH2 is acetylated with chloroacetyl chloride. So, next step is a very interesting reaction. This upon treatment with acetic anhydride, okay, this treatment with acetic anhydride, he got a very interesting compound. Okay. How did this happen? Let us see. So, first the chloroacetyl chloride treatment with acetic anhydride, this carboxylic acid is acetylated. The first step is the acetylation of carboxylic acid. That means a mixed anhydride of this carboxylic acid and acetic acid. So, that gives this intermediate. Now, the lone pair on the nitrogen moves to this carbonyl and this carbonyl oxygen intramolecularly attacks the anhydride and gives this 5 membered ring. Okay. You can see the 5 membered ring. I will leave it for a second for better understanding. Okay. So, now 
the OAC minus, OAC minus which came out can pick up this hydrogen because this hydrogen is acidic isn't it, this hydrogen is acidic. So OAC minus picks up this hydrogen and forms this dienolate. And you can see if in this molecule there is a push pull factor, you have a negative charge on the oxygen and you also have a leaving group here. So this is a classical example for such elimination. So you get this unstable compound, okay. This unstable compound immediately will isomerize, okay. That will give you the product which I showed in the previous slide, okay. So valine upon treatment with chloracetyl chloride followed by acetylation in two steps he got this interesting product. Good. So how this can be, it can be converted into penicillin. So treat with hydrogen sulphide. So hydrogen sulphide, sulphur, you know, they tend to add 1,4. So hydrogen sulphide in the presence of sodium methoxide, that means you are adding SH minus, okay. So the SH minus can add in a 1,4 fashion at this carbon. So that will lead to your 5 membered ring and this exocyclic double bond is missing but you introduce the SH as you, as you know. In penicillin you need that thiol and then hydroxyl group that is a deep, deep penicillin. So now if you treat with sodium methoxide, if you treat with sodium methoxide this 5 membered ring will open. How it will open? This is a mechanism. First methoxy adds to the carbonyl and then O minus when it comes back, you know, it opens a 5 membered ring and it gives this open chain compound, okay. Is it chiral? Is it chiral? No, it is racemic because we started with racemic compound, okay. So you have this, then how you can resolve it? The penicillin is an optical active compound how you can resolve. So first you protect this NH and this SH, okay. And for that you have to remove the acetyl group. So the acetyl group you remove with HCl, so you get NH2. That NH2 on treatment with acetone you protect the compound, okay. And as you can see here this is racemic compound, DL. And they tried to resolve at this stage, but the solution was difficult. So what they did, they treated with formic acid and acetic anhydride. So formic acid and acetic anhydride, they could introduce this aldehyde. The end was protected, okay. Now this racemic mixture was, was resolved with, a, with an alkaloid called bruzine, okay. The racemic mixture was resolved with an alkaloid called bruzine, okay. After resol resolution, so then you just add acid to get back this chiral, okay. So this is optically active now, okay. This upon hydrolysis with HCl, so what will happen? This NCHO, the CHO will go and then you will get NH2. Since you are using HCl, it is formed as the corresponding hydrochloride salt d penicillin hydrochloride salt, okay. The other one, so now you have the d penicillin hydrochloride and you need the aldehyde from the other side. So first you start with tetrabutyl thalimido acetate, okay. So this is very easy you to prepare, you take thalamide and then treat with corresponding bromo compound, okay. So then simple nucleophilic substitution, you will get this compound. This on treatment with sodium tetrabutoxide and to introduce this CHO, okay, introduce this CHO, you treat with tertiary formate, tertiary formate. So you get the corresponding tertiary thalamido melanoldehyde, okay. Now you mix these two, okay, to protect the aldehyde. So when you do that, you get a mixture. 
why you get a mixture? So if you look at this carbon, that is resume, isn't it? So, you get a mixture at this carbon. So, you can call this as D alpha and you can call this as D gamma, but both could be separated. So, take that D alpha and what you need? You need NH2 and this thalamide protecting group can be easily cleaved by treatment with by treating with uh, hydrazine. Okay. So, you treat with hydrazine, the thalamide protective group goes, you recover your NH2. Now, if you treat with HCl, you isolate the corresponding hydrochloride as salt. Okay. Then you treat with base that is triethylamine and then do the acetylation. So, this acetylation you do with phenoxy acetyl chloride. Okay. Phenoxy acetyl chloride. So, now what you need to do? You have to hydrolyze this tertiary butyl ester, then do the coupling. You have NH carboxylic acid afterwards, then you have to couple. So, HCl will remove the tertiary butyl ester okay, and then you treat with pyridine that is just to you know when you when you treat with uh, this NH also will be in the form of NHHCl. So, you have to treat with pyridine, get back the free amine. Once you have the free amine, treat with DCC. Okay. So, the DCC is a good coupling reagent for making lactam. But uh, before that, you have to treat with one equivalent of potassium hydroxide to deprotonate this carboxylic acid. Okay. So, that becomes CO2 minus, then you add this DCC then the DCC undergoes the intramolecular lactam formation. Okay. So, that is how you get the penicillin 5 potassium salt. There is one side reaction which takes place in this synthesis. So, when you have this, when you treat with uh, DCC, what you get is this 5 membered acyl lactam. Okay. Instead of this nitrogen attacking, what happens? the nitrogen lone pair on the acyl group okay, that comes and then the carbonyl group attacks and it forms the 5 membered as a lactone. So, this also you get a decent amount as a side product. So, this 6 amino penicillinic acid that is without the acyl group. So, how one can make because if you look at the earlier synthesis. So, we went with acyl group, finally only we did the coupling, is not it? So, here what you do the NH2, first you protect it as the tritail, NH tritail group, then you do the coupling, okay, you can couple with either DCC or diisopropyl carbodiamide to get the beta lactam. Now, you need to remove the benzyl group and then tritail group. So, both can be done in one step that is upon hydrogenolysis followed by HCl treatment one gets the 6 amino penicillinic acid. So, to summarize what Shigan has done, this was the first and very elegant total synthesis of penicillin and you can see way back in 1957. So, such a uh, unstable reactive final compound penicillin 5 was made by Shigan and his group in 1957 and the synthesis started with uh, commercially available valine okay, and also uh, from thalamide just you take thalamide and then you know uh, treat with treat with uh, bromo, bromoethyl acetate to get the other starting material. So, it was very simple and straightforward starting materials which are commercially available and he had used this successfully to make the total synthesis of penicillin. And the key reactions, uh, when you talk about the key reaction, the Michael addition of uh, SH minus was one of the key reactions and the coupling reagent was used to couple the amine and carboxylic acid intramolecularly to form the 4 member ring. Overall, the total synthesis was accomplished in 8 steps uh, with an overall yield of close to 0.7 percent. 
So considering that this is the first total synthesis, this was a significant achievement. Of course, there were many total synthesis of penicillins later, but in the long run, the huge quantities of penicillins and its derivatives were made only through fermentation method. After fermentation, once you get the penicillin, then one can do lot of synthetic modification to get other penicillin like natural products, but uh, large quantities of penicillins are made only by fermentation. So with this I will complete the total synthesis of penicillin and we will discuss about uh, other natural products belonging to this in the next couple of classes. For example, thionomycin and lactocysteine, these two we will discuss in the next couple of classes. Thank you.